what's up guys good morning today I'm going to be sharing with you guys a I don't know 21 and a half week what I eat in a day so you guys can see how everything has changed probably since the last time that I shared what I eat in a day I think that was still first trimester and a lot of stuff has changed mainly I have finally had to adapt to eating smaller meals throughout the day which was like not my favorite thing in the first trimester because I felt like it never gave my digestion a chance to catch up and I was just like really gassy and constipated and really uncomfortable but uh, in this time of my pregnancy my digestion has gotten better my doctor told me that I can drink uh, Senna tea which I will talk about later in the video if you are not familiar with it but the other thing is my stomach is a lot smaller <laughs> you know I've got this big belly and uh, and so basically I, I'm pretty sure pretty sure the anatomy of it is my stomach is like a lot higher and kind of like pushed up <laughs> underneath my ribs right now and man my eyes are just bigger than my stomach like last night we had beef tips and I made these really really good green beans with like garlic and soy sauce and um, Parmesan cheese super good it's kind of the way my mom used to make them when I was growing up and uh, yeah, I had what I considered to be a, a good like small portion of food and I was just like painfully full halfway through and like had to put some of the meat back. I was like, okay. So yeah, it's uh, it's just been kind of an adjustment, but it's fun because like it helps me think a little bit differently instead of thinking in these big elaborate meals. I just thinking kind of like, what do I want to eat in the next like couple hours? So I just cut up half of a personal watermelon. <laughs> I love the little personal watermelons. Mike got two of them uh, at the grocery store for me. And it was so funny, he came home and he goes, I got you some watermelons. And I was like, how many watermelons did you get? And he's like, no, they're like little. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, like a half of one is like an outstanding size breakfast. So that's what I'm going to eat right now. Ooh. It is almost officially summertime. And Lord knows, one of my favorite things about summertime is actual ripe, delicious, sweet watermelon. So good. I hate to disturb him, but I gotta make this bed. It's one of the things that keeps me sane. You know what I mean? You just gotta like maintain certain things every single day. And if I walk in and my bed's not made, I feel like I just never woke up. So here we go. Sorry, bud. <laughs> so worried <laughs> he didn't even move <laughs> just picked up a rag to dry the dishes off and a dead June bug fell out. Fortunately, I am not afraid of June bugs because they are like the least threatening creatures on earth. Like, let's be real, they can barely see. Yeah, that was like not okay and that rag is definitely not what I should be drying the dishes with. <laughs> We saw that commercial <laughs> that was like actually running your dishwasher if you have like a high efficiency dishwasher, which ours is like, you know, two years old or something. If you have a high efficiency dishwasher, it actually uses less water than uh, just washing your dishes by hand. And I was like, okay. So uh, we've just taken to running it every night because it makes it just like so much, like we tend to get behind. If we wait for it to get full since we're both home now all the time, if we wait for it to get completely full, like we'll end up with like a sink full of dishes waiting for like the next load to clean kind of thing. And so we've just taken to running it every night and loading it every morning and it's so much better. Also, even though I'm out of breath right now, um, can I just say how nice it is to have energy again? <laughs> for those people who are just like trying to survive your first trimester or for those of you who've been there, you know it's, you think you're never gonna have energy again. And it's just crazy how like you get to a point where you've got this big baby saddled to your stomach, but at the same time like, I actually feel like I have stamina and I can like, you know, get up and do all my chores and like get stuff done and feel like my very empowered, productive self. So yeah, I've just been uh, really enjoying the whole like, I don't know, just reinvigoration of that. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> it also, out of freaking nowhere last night, poured down rain. It was amazing and we needed it so much. Yeah, it's super humid now, but it's actually just like so nice that we got the rain. Somebody just loves to sit in the sun to the point that I have to come out here and remind him to drink water 
because he will just sit here and luxuriate until he gives himself a dehydration stomach ache and then he'll go in there and chow down on food and then he'll throw it all up because he's a disaster and he's helpless. So I come out here periodically with like a bowl of ice water and just, he comes in and he just tanks on it, but it's like, he won't do it himself. Oh, by the way, that's fly paper. We're apparently rednecks <laughs> because like the flies were just getting completely out of control. I need to take them down because they're like a proper graveyard at this point. Oh, but look at this. Well, I've got my ISO turned down. I planted these last summer and they pretty much like died over the winter. And then the mowers accidentally like didn't realize this was even a plant and they mowed it down right in the beginning of spring. And I kept putting a bucket on top of it to try and, you know, tell them like don't mow. And so look at it, not only has it grown back, but it's the one that's like blooming the most enthusiastically. This one's got some blooms on it. I love the colorway of this. I love that it's like a deep turquoise kind of color. I guess that that's what that is. And then it's got that contrast of the bright pink. When I bought these, I could have sworn she told me that this one was gonna be like shrub height, but I guess this one's gonna be shrub height. <laughs> Cause it's like already blooming. But they, you know, these are crepe myrtles. They, they grow like crazy, but they are three different kind of varieties. And then we have, Mike's herb garden. I see he planted some more basil. We've got some more basil like sprouting right there. We have, I think that's a fennel. <laughs> this is a tomato plant we transplanted and I don't think that he's doing so well. Sage is coming up cr like crazy. I don't think any of these are actually herbs, but he thinks they're tomato plants. I don't know. I don't know what his like <laughs> process was here, but, uh, but yeah, we're, oh hi. I just love that he always wants to come out here with me. I love that like the soil is finally soaked from the rain. Like that makes me really happy. It was looking real dry, even though Mike was watering it all the time, like multiple times a day. It just gets like full sun back here. And then this is his original herb garden, which is just full of like oregano and marjoram and thyme mostly. Yeah. And then this is his little bean stock. He's growing some cannellini beans. Look at that. Little bean pod. <sighs> We're definitely amateurs at this, but uh, we also have some really, really incredible compost that just kind of enables whatever Mike decides to experiment with. So that's what's going on right now. And he loves to sit underneath these trees. If you haven't watched my vlogs before, he loves to sit under them and pretend they're shade trees, which they are absolutely not. Isn't that right, sweetheart? They're your trees, huh? Dude, they're mine. The good guy. The best guy. <laughs> oh. friend. So I have here my prenatals. I have prenatal DHA. I have a gentle iron for, uh, and I need iron, but I don't want to get nauseous. And then I have four of my gummy vitamins. Okay. It is now 11 AM and I've had to kind of rethink my eating times. You know what I mean? Like it used to be breakfast, lunch, dinner. Now it's like when I'm hungry, when I'm hungry, when I'm hungry, when I'm hungry, <laughs> you know? And so I am just having a smallish little meal. I'm going to do an open face tomato sandwich because it's one of my favorite things in the world and you know at heart I'm a southern girl so I'm gonna toast some Rudy's homestyle gluten-free bread it is the best one that they have at my grocery store you know there are a lot of really good ones especially there's this local one here in Austin called gluten free yourself and uh, it's unbelievable but it's like really hard to get your hands on like you have to go to very specific places at very specific times to get it uh and also if i have a loaf of it which is ten dollars by the way um i will eat the whole thing in like a matter of three days it's like it's that good yeah so danger danger but i'm gonna gonna toast up a couple of these cut up a tomato and um put some dukes in between the two. I did just decide, <laughs> we have leftovers from last night. So we've got the beef tips. We actually bought some um, Impossible Burger and uh, like the, um, just the ground beef version of it. They finally sell it in the stores here. And uh, and I got to try that for the first time yesterday because they made the Impossible, uh, you know, ground beef or whatever gluten-free for uh, for the first time, you know, a, a while ago, but they didn't used to actually sell it in the stores. They only like uh, had it at restaurants. Anyway, I got to try that for the first time last night and, you know, with all the accoutrement and everything on it for uh, for a burger or something, I felt like it was, you know, pretty edible, but I'm still totally weirded out by lab meat. Just completely, <laughs> completely weirded out by it, but I did try it. Anyway, I have decided that uh, I'm going to make and show you guys tonight how I make a, like, a really healthy, like, creamy green soup. It's, like, one of my favorite things to have anyway but like also just while pregnant it's like super super inexpensive to make because you know it's like basically broth whatever milk cream you have around herbs and stuff like that and then i use frozen veggies like 
uh, asparagus and broccoli and like spinach and stuff like that. And then I blend it up in the Vitamix. And so it's super delicious. I'll put like sour cream on it and like a little bit of like uh, Aleppo pepper or something, maybe some like coriander, you know, some smoked paprika and it's just out of this world. So I'm gonna show that to you guys tonight, but right now we're just gonna fix a little Sammy. Dukes is the only mayonnaise, full stop. That's it. If you can't get it where you are, order it on Amazon. It's that big. Another big thing that is the best in the summertime is a good, ripe, delicious tomato. I'll buy Campari's year round because they're like hot house, I think. And so they will taste good pretty much no matter what, but you know, your regular old vine ripened tomatoes, they're really like only good in the summertime. Tastes like home. So I have a less busy day than I expected to. Um, typically on Tuesdays I have like at least a couple of calls, but none of that is happening right now. I got all of my work taken care of. So I am going to go do a little bit of prenatal yoga using the Down Dog app, the Down Dog prenatal yoga app. And <laughs> I did buy one Lululemon workout set in a size six uh, in preparation for my size being a little bit bigger, but uh, it's in the wash right now. <laughs> so I'm in my fours right now and they just don't really fit the same, you know? Um, but I thought I'd give you guys maybe a more satisfying bump date than before. So this is like from the front, you know, it's a little bit wider. I'm carrying more weight right here and you can definitely see, um, <clears throat> uh, <laughs> this bra looks a lot different than it used to. It is crazy having boobs for the first time in my entire life. I'm gonna turn to the side. <laughs> yes, that's a 21 week pregnant woman right there. But anyway, I need to stop procrastinating and go do my yoga. Typically, I will come up here and before I do my yoga, I will um, pull a few cards, set my intentions for my practice. Prenatal yoga is pretty, uh, it's pretty slow. <laughs> yeah, I think even though it's really slow, it's like, <laughs> it's ideal. <laughs> I still get really tired. <laughs> yeah, um, I got, I got three cards. I drew three cards and I got the Queen of Pentacles. I got the Chariot and the Magician. Beautiful spread, <laughs> really. Um, you know, all about like work-life balance and motherhood and focus and achievement and motivation, empowerment and all kinds of uh, good things just to help me, um, help me settle my mind and focus while I'm practicing. So I didn't include the whole practice because I'm telling you guys, it's boring. <laughs> a lot of it's really boring to watch. The biggest thing that I found is a difference. I mean, obviously besides like omitting certain poses because you just can't, but uh, the biggest thing that I find is the difference is just how long you hold the poses. You hold them for so long. So yeah, I like didn't really break a sweat or anything. So I'm just going to go take some heartburn medication. I was inverted a little bit and um, I mean, I'd inverted inverted, but you know, moving myself around and Oh boy, I mean, it doesn't really take anything at all to give you heartburn when you're pregnant. It's just absolutely like your little dumb companion on your shoulder all the time, sitting right there waiting to strike. So yeah, I can feel it coming on. I'm gonna go take a Pepsid. Hey, sweetheart. How are you? Yeah? <laughs> I just like how Bruce kind of has a cult following on my channel. Like Per Monster's obviously like the people's champion, but like Bruce has this small but vocal audience of appreciators. Sorry to bother you. Okay, it is about 2.45. I put on a t-shirt, that bra was like trying to suffocate me and kill me. But, uh, but yeah, 
So I am in need of a little, a little grubbage. So I have leftover pizza that I made yesterday and it is on a cauliflower crust. It also happens to not be the world's greatest cauliflower crust. It is one that Mike bought because they were out of the cauliflower one that I really like at our grocery store. And it is one that's like cauliflower, I think. And it's terrible. What I typically put on my pizza lately is just bell peppers and jalapenos. I might even go for some extra jalapenos. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, this is what I'm gonna have now that will kind of tide me over until we will start preparing dinner in a few hours. Look at this. Look at this sad pizza crust. Ugh. I think I'm gonna have to eat this with a fork and a knife. <laughs> Milk is just so non-negotiable. Look at this tired lazy boy look at him he's so sweet like a little baby do whatever you want <laughs> oh that looks unbelievable isn't that a birthday rule <laughs> i also have our keys oh great and we have goat cheese and we have okay water. something that i wanted to mention in this video but that is just you know not necessarily the most um i don't know polite thing to talk about is the fact that if you are pregnant, especially in the beginning of your pregnancy, you're probably experiencing constipation in a way that your body has never shown you before. And it's something that I was actually really scared about handling on my own because I did go through a miscarriage and I knew that cramping was bad, you know? Um, and I always thought that that meant you shouldn't use anything that would make you cramp, uh, like stimulant wise to try and help you go. But I, uh, I talked to, <laughs> food on my face, um, I talked to my doctor about it and she was like, A, do not take psyllium husk. So this is psyllium husk right here. And it's like the main ingredient in uh, Metamucil, but I think Metamucil is more refined and makes it easier to digest. That has never worked for me. It's like insoluble fiber basically, and so supposedly it's supposed to help things along. Yes, Liam Husk, in my doctor's words, makes you blow up like a balloon, and she's right. So she did tell me that basically she wanted me to stay ahead of it. She's like, I think that it's healthier for you to stay ahead of that kind of thing just because it's like, you know, better for all the nutrients in your body to kind of keep it moving. So she gave me permission to use this, which I've had on hand for ages and ages. This stuff is incredible. And I wanna say, if you've ever used this and you're like, khaki, that stuff's actually pretty violent. Like, like, you take that on like, you know, a non-pregnant, uh, you know, constipated stomach or something like that, like, it cramps a lot, and it really hurts, and it'll make you go, but it's like not that pleasant, I'm telling you, the, the effects of it are dampened so much by pregnancy, and like, the extremeness that is pregnancy constipation, like, it is just like, it's like five minutes of like, gentle, like, oh, what was that, and you're like, huh. I have to go. How nice. Yeah, uh, absolutely none of the like wake up in the middle of the night horrible doubled over cramping that you would normally have from a laxative when you're not pregnant or even this stuff when you're not pregnant. Like you, pregnancy, <laughs> pregnancy constipation, it just takes like the total edge off of something like this and just makes you very gently go. So that is something that I wanted to mention. It's not the most polite topic, but it's very important. I mean, it was, this place was like a beehive today. <laughs> I told Lee, I was like, yeah, I, I haven't had So I'll tell you what I've done so far. I cut up an onion, I cut up like five piece, small pieces of celery and then like four big carrots. And uh, I'm just browning them in some, uh, some olive oil. And then I put like salt and pepper, coriander, thyme, uh, celery seed, just whatever you think sounds good. It's all gonna taste good when it comes together anyway, so you just kind of season it. I just like to season stuff when um, there's no liquid in the pot because it like opens up the spices instead of it all kind of just tasting like food that's warm. You know what I mean? Like you don't wanna just taste like the ingredients warm. You wanna give every single step an opportunity to like brown and develop flavor. So that's what she looks like right now. You can see it's 
developing a good amount of browning, and then we'll start adding some frozen veggies. Actually, I'm probably gonna do the garlic and then the frozen veggies. You just don't wanna add the garlic in with all this stuff because it'll burn. All right, so we just got some organic broccoli and some organic aspar uh, regular asparagus, and I think these are both from Trader Joe's. So I'm just taking, you know, some of those, put them in a pot, <laughs> unlike me. A whole bunch of broccoli. Maybe just the whole bag of broccoli. It'll be very nutritious. Yeah. Go ahead and do the garlic. There we go. And if you're like, Kaki, that's really dry. There's no liquid in that pot. It's okay. Everything needs to brown a little bit before we add liquid. So, we got all kinds of goodie in there now. And so all this frozen stuff needs to, like, unfrozen itself. And it'll kind of make its own moisture a little bit. So I'm just gonna put the lid on there and lower the heat just a little bit so that the garlic doesn't burn um, and leave that for just a minute. And um, I guess I'll get the rest of the stuff out. All right, it steamed itself for just a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and, it smells really good, add the, um, just the chicken stock so that I bring this up to a boil. But first I'm gonna add a couple more seasonings because that's the mood that I'm in. I'm gonna go with some smoked paprika. Just a little bit, maybe a lot of bit. Remember, it's a big old bowl of soup. So, I mean, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of ground cayenne. I just like a little edge on this kind of thing. Cayenne is really like, I don't know, it's not that spicy. Turn the heat back up, because we're gonna bring this up to a boil. And doesn't that just look abundant and gorgeous? Look at this. Look at that. Doesn't that just look like nutrition that your body wants to eat? Look at all those colors. Oh, girl. So yeah, all that flavor is really like deep down in that mirepoix. Mirepoix is the word that the French use for the combination of celery, onions, and um, carrots. Mmm, and look at it all breaking down. It like doesn't matter that everything's really big because it's all going in the blender anyway. It didn't occur to me right at first. I was cutting the celery all small and then I was like, I'm not making vegetable soup. This is gonna be blended. I can just chop it up. You can use vegetable stock, whatever you have. And I'm careful, even though I do season everything like right in the beginning, I'm careful about like adding too much salt because a lot of times A, it cooks down and uh, it'll intensify a salty flavor. Um, but B, a lot of times this kind of thing will have, you know, just an unpredictable level of salt in it, depending on what brand you get. And so I just kind of like to leave a margin of error there because even though I love salt, not everybody loves salt. So it just wasn't as much chicken stock as I thought it was gonna be, you know? There you go. That's about half the second box, I guess. All right, so the kind of ratio here, I'm just eyeballing it. I'm definitely not like a recipe writer by any means, but basically, you know, it's just kind of enough to cover the tops or to meet the tops of all of them. And then we're going to cover this, bring the heat up, it's already up, and let it come up to a boil and let it cook for like, let's put it on for like 15 minutes because I want it to just really get all those flavors and everything in there. Granted, after you blend it, you can still cook the crap out of it after the fact, but um, yeah, just wanna make sure that everything gets really nice and soft. All right, it has been 15 minutes that this got a chance to really cook and come together. So now we are going to put it in Yon Vitamix. All right, so best way I've found to do this is with a ladle and just try and get an even dispersion, dispersal of liquid and solid. If you don't get it perfect, it's fine. Okay. And I like to get out a big metal bowl to put this in once it's blended so that I can make room for the next one. This will do nicely. And set it on hot soup. It's probably good. And then we go in with the second half. And I actually like to wash the pot out or at least wipe it out because otherwise you end up still with like the chunks that are stuck to the inside of the pot, even as few as there are, uh, being in your smooth soup. And I don't like that. Alrighty. 
So now we just take both of those and we put them back in the pot. Pretty simple. Okay, I'm gonna turn that down. She's still pretty darn hot. Now I'm gonna turn this on low because we're gonna add a little bit of cream and we don't want it to curdle. Half and half is gonna have a stabilizer in it that makes it so that it doesn't curdle in hot things. But heavy whipping cream, which is what I'm using today, is better. <laughs> and I don't think that it has that same stabilizer in it. I'm not sure, but I don't think so. Maybe the gel and gum helps, but I think that that's what makes it whipping cream. I don't think that that's like a heat stabilizer. I don't know, that's probably a quarter of a cup, something like that. Holly's gonna clean the floor up for us. Just make sure there's no onions. Dogs can't have onions. And could you use a non-dairy cream of some kind? Absolutely, and then you don't have to worry about curdling or splitting or anything, I don't think. And you could also use vegetable broth and just make this totally vegan. I just happen to be absolutely addicted to the taste of chicken. So yeah, that is pretty much it. And then you can fine tune that to, you know, your taste and everything like that for, you know, whether you want it creamier or whether you want it saltier or whether you want it spicier or whatever. But Hi. what? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> we need to take a pause. Hey peanut. I love you. I think I've caught this. This might be the third or fourth time I've seen him do this on my vlog. Meow. Hey, buddy. Purr. Best cat ever. Purr. Hi. You know, I don't even think he's in distress. I think it's like, you guys keep saying hi, so I'm gonna say hi back. He's like, this is a dumb game the humans like to play. Hi, why is this so amusing to you? <laughs> but what I was saying is basically that is a recipe for any blended soup. You start with a mirepoix, make sure that you brown everything in like in order or not even in order, but like give everything time to develop flavor. And then you can add in whatever the heck you want. Just make sure it's cooked all the way through before you blend it. You know, if you're using a potato or something like that, it's going to take a little bit longer to cook than like asparagus. But you know, add your seasonings as you go, like season per the amount of ingredients that you have and things like that. But that is, and a completely adaptable blended soup recipe that's like not in a book or anything. It's just like out of my head because it's like that's how you make blended soup. Start with mirepoix, add whatever you want, you know, add some chicken broth and blend it up. <laughs> add some cream at the end and it's gonna be delicious. So you're welcome. Now you can go be a soup blogger. All right, so I am just putting a dollop of sour cream on here. Bloop. Probably gonna just sink. Really just a little shake of coriander little bit, woo! That's why you do it in your hand, of smoked paprika. I like how it looks, I like how it tastes. And then I drizzle just a little bit of like fresh extra virgin olive oil right on the top. And that, fam, is how you make a delicious, healthy, blended soup that is also packed with flavor, will heat up again beautifully as leftovers, and will also help you, um, it will help you go to the bathroom. So yeah. That is what I'm having for dinner. <laughs> a little bite here. Ooh, spicy. You get like spice mainly from the celery, I think. You know what I mean? It's like that kind of like, it's like a vegetal spice. And then, yeah, you get all the green, but it's also like a really creamy green taste. And um, yeah, and then like all the edge from the garlic and everything. It's quite excellent. I hope that you try it. <laughs> Let me know if you do. Oh, this is a killer angle. Oh, if ever you have wondered what it would look like if you tied my hair up in a towel and let it dry completely, this is the magic. I am at the end of the day, so you guys saw everything that I ate. You saw that last popsicle. Hey, ankles, what's up? I can always tell it's Mike because, well, he's the only one who lives here besides me, but also I can hear him coming because his ankles pop the whole time. Anyway. <laughs> I ate two popsicles. I had a tangerine one and a grape one. They're the um, outshine popsicles. You know, you get them at like Target. Anyway, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoy this <laughs> spooky angle I have going here, but I just wanted to go ahead and actually formally say goodnight to you guys. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're not already, and I will see you guys in the next one.